Hello, this is Billy Core from the Nostalgia Mall, and today we're going to be looking at a old-fashioned boombox. Um, this is one that has a little bit of sentimental value to me. Um, this is the Koss model HG910A, and this particular um, example was manufactured in August of 1996. Now, why is this sentimental to me? Well, this was the first boombox I ever owned or actually the first anything I ever owned that could play audio CDs. Now, um, I got this in the spring, I believe, of 1997. And you're probably wondering um, why I couldn't play audio CDs on my Packard Bell Legend 822 CDT. Well, simple and stupid reason for that. I didn't know it could do that at the time. <laughs> But around 97 or so, I made that discovery that Windows has a CD player um, application that can play audio CDs. So what I did was, I, um, I was seven years old at the time, I went out and purchased my very first audio CD, and that was the soundtrack to the movie Space Jam. Yes, that one. <laughs> And I would play it on my um, Packard Bell Legend 822 CDT. But then I wanted more. I wanted something that was dedicated to playing um, audio CDs. Because at the time, my family never owned an, a CD player to play audio CDs with. Um, we didn't have, we especially didn't have one in the car, um, cause all my life up until that point it was nothing but, um, cassette tapes. So, I, um, begged my parents for an audio CD player, and eventually they gave in and bought me this, I believe from Best Buy in the spring of 1997. The, um, this call spoon box right here. Now, this is not the original unit that I had as a child. Um, it was gotten rid of probably sometime in the early 2000s. I picked this particular example up at Goodwill a few weeks ago when I was visiting Winston-Salem, and I was very tickled to find this, um, to find my very first CD player for sale at Goodwill. Um, this was being sold for $10, which is what I paid for it. And for the most part, it works perfectly fine. Um, I'm, it's funny. I bought this. Uh, the I got the original one back in '97 to specifically to play audio CDs. But I actually bought this particular unit specifically to play audio cassettes um, because I was wanting um, something out here in the office to play audio cassettes with and. Happened to find this at Goodwill, and it was, um, and it had all that sentimental value to me, and I knew I had to pick it up. So um, today we're going to do a video about my very first CD player. Again, this is a um, cost unit. So let's get the camera off the tripod and take a better look at it. All right, here's the front of it. It is um, pretty dirty. I do need to clean it up. Had it for about three weeks, I want to say. Um, there's the um, CD player up top. It has 21 programmable CD memories, and it's a push to open. CD player on this particular unit works fine, but it has a bad habit of um, lo losing its space and um, skipping, so I believe a lens cleaning is in order, and I actually do have a CD lens cleaner on the way from eBay. Um, I'm needing it not only for this CD player, but for another, for, but for um, various um, CD-ROM drives I have in a few of my vintage computers. So that'll definitely come in handy, and we will be demonstrating this shortly. And of course, it also has a AM/FM radio with a analog tuning knob there and an LED display which is used for the CD player only, I believe. You have your speaker balance control right here, a switch for DBBS, which is for dynamic bass boost sound, high performance tuning system. Um, I believe all it does is just add a little bit of extra bass to the, um, to the uh, sound. 
And here's your analog tuning knob for the radio. And volume knob here a little with who knows what on there. Um, CD controls, play, pause, stop, program, repeat. And on the other side here we got more CD controls. We got search and skip. Power button, three and a half inch headphone jack. Over here we've got the um, function controls um, for um, right now it's set to tape for on um, dub high and dub normal. You can, so this does um, audio cassette um, copying. And over here we got the radio functions currently set to FM stereo. And down here we've got the um, tape decks. This is a dual tape deck for um, recording. Right here is deck A with all the record controls here and over here is deck B without the recording controls and we've got dual stereo speakers right here so um, oh and of course you got your power button that's a good thing to have on a radio turn it around and it does have a carrying handle there's the um, speaker connectors these are detachable, but I don't want to detach them because I might not be able to <laughs> reattach them. And um, you got a compartment here for, um, I believe, D alkaline batteries. Probably eats through them quite a bit, but I don't plan on ever using this on batteries. There's AC um, cable there. And our manufacture date, August 1996. Not sure when my um, childhood unit was manufactured. And there's the model sticker there. All those goodies. Class 1 laser product. <laughs> and um, here's the... <laughs> the former antenna. It was this way when I got it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, poor antenna, but radio reception is still good enough, though. But to be honest, I rarely ever listen to the radio on this, so I could really care less. Uh, mostly what I'm using this for is um, cassette playback. Like I said, it's funny. Back in 1997, when I originally got this, I bought it just for the CD player. But now that I've got it again 21 years later, I'm using it for the tape player. And of course, back then I um, did use the tape player on it as well. Um, made a lot of mixed tapes with it, um, copying songs from CDs onto cassettes. Yep, that, that, that was the days of the mixtape, um, a day long gone by. I really should buy a um, pack of um, blank cassettes probably on eBay or something and make another um, mixtape just to listen to. In fact, I've got a, in fact, I've got a um, out of town trip coming up this weekend, so that would come in handy, but I don't think I'd be able to get a blank tape in time for that. So, enough of me blabbering, let's um, demonstrate now, um, before I continue, um, I do want to warn you guys that this unit is not considered high-end at all. Um, I, would, I would consider it somewhere kind of between low-range and mid-range quality. So, um, you audiophiles out there might get a little bit of, of a cringe from this, but you know what? I kind of like these little underdog pieces of technology from back in the day, and I believe they need to be preserved just as much as the higher-end stuff. So that's why I'm making this video, and I'm planning on keeping this um, unit. So anyway, um, let's turn it on. We're going to go ahead and just switch it to um, the radio first of all. And we'll see if we can find the piano music station because of copyright mafia. We don't want them coming in um, ruining our party. The situation of crisis, which challenges what their deepest beliefs are. Patricia Clarkson, how did you pick up the mantle of that? I mean, that's a large role. Um, it's I have a no large clue who character these people that you are. play in this likable in that um, this character april is very loyal to her friend janet and kind Sounds of like pinched a book club. And, uh, those reasons i wanted to do it it's a as only sally can write a true 
challenged me. And so getting a little bit of piano music there, but reception's not all that good, mainly because of the busted antenna here. <laughs> Actually, if I put my hand on it, it comes in better. But enough of that, let's um, demonstrate the reason why I bought this unit all the way back in 1997, the CD player. And I um, just recorded a um, CD a moment ago. Um, yes, this can re this can play back um, CDR disc perfectly well. This is a CD with um, uh, MP3 versions of MIDI files, so we don't get any copyright strikes. So we'll go ahead and put it in there. All right. I don't know if you can see the display there. But yeah, that display only comes on when you're using the CD player. So let's go ahead and um, start playing. See where it skipped right there. And there it goes again. Hopefully, a um, lens cleaning will take care of that. Skip to the next one. enough of that. That's how the CD player functions. Um, this right here is where I first heard an audio CD. Well, actually no, it was on the Packard Bell, but other than that, this is where I first heard an audio CD on. Unfortunately, we would not get a um, CD player in a car until the very, very end of 1999 when my dad got a white 2000 Honda Accord which had a CD player in it so up until that point even though I had a CD player in the house we still had to listen to tapes in the car so anyway speaking of cassette tapes let's demonstrate that um, function 
Um, again, to avoid the copyright mafia, I have selected a, well, <laughs> kind of a bizarre look, um, tape here. This is a tape of um, an old church service um, from my church. This is our um, 4th of July um, service, dated July 2nd, 1995. And um, the reason I want to play this tape for you guys is because this has a um, recording of myself singing uh, My Country Tis of Thee, but it was actually intended to be the um, ch church children's choir singing it. But the only person you can hear is me because I was right up at the microphone singing it as loud as possible. And the reason I did this was because there was an episode of um, Rugrats from the 90s that I was obsessed with. It was an episode where um, they dressed Tommy Pickles up as a girl and entered him in a beauty pageant. And he was competing against Angelica. And Angelica sang My Country Tis of Thee very loudly, as I do on this tape. And at the end, where she sing, sure she's supposed to sing... Let freedom ring. She sings, Let freedom ring. And on this tape, I kind of emulate that because that's where I got the inspiration from Rugrats. So get ready to hear five year old Billy Core sing his little heart out. Now, um, quick word about the um, actual tape mechanism on here. On the um, on deck A right here, when I first got this a few weeks ago, um, the tape would um, get jammed. Um, it would start playing, but then just um, c kind of just jam. It wouldn't. It wasn't eating the tape or anything. It would just kind of jam. If you get what I'm saying. But after um, playing with it, playing tapes on it for a little while, I think I was able to get it going. I think something must have just been stuck over the years and playing it after a while um, got it free again so um, anyway here is um, five-year-old Billy Corr with his rendition of My Country Tis of Thee And there you have it. <laughs> My singing career um, never really took off, unfortunately, as you could possibly tell. In fact, I hear sirens outside right now. Um, <laughs> someone probably called the cops on me for disturbing the peace with that tape. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Um, that was a demonstration of the of this um, little cost boom box from 1996, um, my very first CD player. It's a very, very underrated unit, not very um, powerful at all. Um, tape mechanism has no um, Dolby noise reduction or correction at all and um, it plays tapes a little bit faster than they should be played, which I actually kind of prefer because it gives it a more retro sound to it. But yeah, i um, very glad to um, have another example of these um, in my home once again. So, until next time, this is Billy Cole reminding you there's new videos every Sunday for Let's Plays, Tuesdays and Thursdays for regular videos, and you can support me on Patreon if you like. Link for that is in the description. But until next time, this is Billy Core signing off.